Got a tire down there. He made the statement to the family that he's going to go check out a fishing spot, yet he didn't have any fishing gear. And with the two lakes in the area, that's why I'm so hopeful that I was going to be able to solve this case and find James. We're officially on the military base now. I honestly have no idea what we're getting ourselves into. Yesterday, we were met with a little bit of resistance from military police as we were wrapping up day one search looking for James Addison, 65 years of age, who went missing June 10th of 2021 in Killeen, Texas. Let me first give you a recap as to where we started looking for James yesterday and our game plan of today. James left around 6 p.m. and he said, I'm going to check out a fishing spot. He didn't have his fishing gear. So what was James's real intentions? He's from the area, he already knows what his fishing spots are. So with very little information, we have to start putting this together. Where did James live? So we have kind of a central point here in Killeen, Texas. We then start with a five mile radius. We also add a 10 mile and a 15. I have two major lakes here. And so that's what I was really focused in on is what was the shortest distance from his home area to the closest boat ramp where we ended up yesterday at location number one. We didn't find a vehicle there and there was a lot of growth. We used the magnetometer. Location number two was really shallow. It was just on the other side of the bridge. But we then jumped over to what I felt was a really probable location, location number three, and we actually found a vehicle over there. The sad thing is, is our GoPros weren't working. We lost the footage on that one, but we were able to find a vehicle that had been under water for 15, 20 years. We did bust out all the windows. While we were there, we did jump over to location number four. We also checked out on the way up to location number six, we found a vehicle right in this area right here. Now that vehicle was so rusted that even the magnet wouldn't stick to it. It brought up a couple of chunks. So if I had to guess that vehicle was probably down there 25 to 35 years. But here's where it then started getting a little tricky for us. We didn't know, but we jumped up to location number seven, which this pink shaded area, and let me show you how much that is, is all military base around here. So the military police, they were actually quite um, polite to us, but they were very strict and stern as to, you're not going in that area. But the number one thing that they were able to help me rule out on that one is the entire area is fenced. They're going to know if a vehicle enters that area and there was no vehicle and no fence that had been busted in the last year and a half for this lake that was tucked away back here at location number seven. We have no other water within this five mile radius. We have this pink area, again, it's military. So we can easily rule out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven potential bodies of water, eight that are within that 10 mile ring. And with that in mind, that pretty much clears everything within our five mile and 10 mile radius rings. So let's just push this a little bit further because we do have another main lake in the area. We have two potential spots. Now, yesterday we were able to drive through a gate that said, hey, you are on military base. You have the right to, you know, search and seizure and, you know, whatever else. So we're gonna go ahead and start this as our location number one, where we're gonna come up on this road. We're then gonna come back to the recreation area. This one, in my opinion, is very unlikely. It's very busy, military families are out, but we'll go ahead and just put eyes on it. Maybe we'll put a boat in the water there. We then come down to location number nine and number 10. Now with these two locations, we're now back into the public arena, you know, the civilian life, the, you know, boat ramps. Again, it's the middle of summer. I'm having a real hard time with this. I don't know where James ended up. Now we do have some other uh, commitments to get to later on this afternoon, but if we have some additional time before we leave the area, we will check out location number 11, 12, 13, and 14. Again, none of them in my opinion, are real probable as far as a location that you're going to be checking out or even an accident. Let's say that he just simply goes, he's looking at water, accidentally puts in the wrong gear. These are areas that, again, in my opinion, I feel like there's gonna be enough people around, somebody would have seen him. Anyway, on at that note, that's how we're going to start our day. Let's get to it, our time is limited. who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. So 
million divers cracking cold cases for free. We're officially on the military base now. So I think we're gonna start running into a lot more of these, like do not enter private. I don't know, we'll see. I honestly have no idea what we're getting ourselves into. All right, now we are at the end here. So going left, oh, that thing is completely, look, we're supposed to have a whole bunch of water there. This lake is completely down. We have zero water. Right here, this is what I was interested in. As we come up on it, and I was looking at a whoosh, just off into the lake here. There is no more lake. So that checks this location off. Let's do this. Let's backtrack just a little bit where we were at. And let's see if there's actual access onto those two fishing ponds back there. And although it said you need a, a fishing permit from the base, I just want to know if we can actually get there publicly without opening any gates and potentially drive right into it. Oh, this might be hopeful. See, I can see this is a nice, quiet, secluded spot. Now, on this side, I would say no, because of the way that the slope is. See, like, if the water level's up, see, it only drops, like, 18 inches, 30 feet out. But let's take a closer look and see what we want to do here. Yeah, it could absolutely drop off. And, you know, even with a car, we don't know what kind of car we're looking for. It just says car in his case notes. But even that, I mean, you can get a car to the other side. It looks like that side looks like it could drop off more than this side. So I'm gonna say, let me back the trailer up to the water's edge and let's rule this one out. Because what I like about this more so than the lake, the lake has eyes on it everywhere. There's no eyes on this. And it was accessed right off the road. All right, four feet on one, one foot on the other. I said it's only one foot there. That's not very deep. Only three feet here. Definitely not high, hard, high enough for a car. Let's search along the dam. The dam area should be a lot deeper. Yeah, five feet, six feet. All right, now it's deep enough to hide a car. Yeah, and with a nice clear bottom like this, it's going to be really easy to scan out. Right now we're heading, if you look on the hummingbird here, we're heading at 3.6 miles an hour. So two and a half to 3.6 is a good speed for what we have going on. The bottom screen here is a side scan imaging. The shadow that you see on the left there is what the, in, or the outtake is right there. And that's what we're looking for most of the time is we're not looking at the actual object. We'll pick it up on these shadows as we're out here scanning. And so the way that this one works is side scan. We normally shoot 75 feet to the left, 75 feet to the right of the boat. Anything that's black is water column. You can see our boat icon kind of moving along through here. The uh, depth of it is on the down imaging. You can see currently we're at two and a half feet. So it gets real shallow, kind of what I was talking about when we first got here on the other side, how there's not much of a slope. And as you come out 50 feet, it's only dropped about three feet or so. So it's a lot harder to hide a vehicle. But then we end up with this bigger slope that I was interested in as I was pointing from the other side to this side. And you can see that now we suddenly drop off into seven, seven and a half feet of water. So when we're looking at the down imaging here, anything from the top of this down to like that gold color, that's the water column from the boat to the bottom of the lake. And then over here on our live scope, whatever's happening on the live scope is actually happening in real time, whereas the hummingbird is a picture in time. So we can actually scroll back 
and look at, all right, do we miss anything? Do we want to zoom in on anything? We can go back to that little um, oh, outtake. So as I scroll up here, and then I can scroll in and you can see, all right, oh, look, it's in the shape of a car, a square. But we already know exactly what it was because we were able to identify topside what it was. But if that popped up and we were unsure, then we would do a few more passes and check it out at some different angles. And this lake is not that big. We can do it at three and a half miles an hour. Anything that's gonna pop up in here is gonna be easy to see because it's such a smooth bottom. And then a lot of it, as we get to the northern end, further away from the dam, it's going to get shallower. And so we won't actually have to do the entire lake. As we come up to the northern part of this lake here, as I was mentioning, you know, now we're only at four feet. We're gonna start coming up under four feet now, 3.9. And as you're looking over here at the shore, you'll see, you know, you're out 30, 40 feet from the bushes and it only has an 18 inch drop or so. That means that we don't have any deep holes and we're not going to have any deep holes, just the way that, you know, natural earthen dams work on lakes like this. The farther you are from the earthen dam, the shallower it's going to get like this. And so now we're only down at two and a half feet. There's no reason to even finish running it as we can see that the slope gets less and less up there. So we'll come across to the other side, circle back to the RV, and let's go hit the uh, other one here on the base. Now over on the right-hand side, you'll see some uh, weird inconsistencies. It's no longer uh, flat but we can rule out that it's any type of a vehicle because of the way that it's it's so long. So it's almost like it's a uh, earthen drop off over there. But what we wanna do with something like that, because it's so dark on the right hand side there, that means that it's higher here and it's a drop off and we have a shadow. So we wanna make sure that, let's say that a vehicle goes over and then just goes over that, it could be hiding in that shadow so we're gonna head out. It looked like it was about 20, 25 feet further out into the lake. And then we're gonna get a different down imaging and side imaging on it as we go check it out. And so now it's still on our right-hand side because we moved over a lot further. And it's just the way the earth is, but now we can see on this side, see how the shadow's on the right-hand side. So now the shadow is on the side that we were just on and now we've now cleared it on the opposite side where that shadow was the first time. The one thing I wanna double check is we're gonna go out just a little bit further on this also because you have the road that comes straight into the lake. And let's say that uh, somebody decides to get a little bit of speed we just wanna make sure that we double check it a little bit further out should somebody launch off. All right, definitely deep enough. Eight and a half, nine. It's all clear though. I can say with 100% certainty there is not a vehicle in this one. So let's go see if we can jump onto that other one and make a difference in the world today. Yeah, we're gonna check that one out and then we're gonna check out the uh, recreation area over here as well. I don't have any confidence in the recreation area. This other little lake or pond up here, if we can get in onto it the same way that we just did that other one, we definitely wanna check that out. And then after that, we should be back outside of the military base area that we'll be able to check the other two locations on the lake that I was interested in. Now this is the military base specific recreation area, authorized military veterans, civilians. Oh, civilians can go down, but you gotta pay. So I'm going to exclude this location. Somebody that is going to be doing something intentional, in my opinion, is not going to be paying gate fees and everything else to get into specific areas. We have never once solved the case based upon that doesn't mean we wouldn't in the future, but what it also, coming back to June 10th of 2021, you're in the middle of summer. 
and families are out. This is going to be a very highly uh, congested area in the summertime. So for that reason, even though we were aware of it, I never had an interest of searching it. I just wanted to put eyes on it. So we're gonna go ahead and go across the, the uh, road here where that other lake is more secluded and let's go check that one off our list. First initial thoughts on it, very similar to the last one that we were on, but I believe this one's going to be a lot shallower. One, it's shorter and you can actually see the uh, water sticking out, or the uh, little island sticking out up there. The road does go around, but you can see it's built up a lot less over here on the dam side than the last one was. I'd, I'd be surprised if it was over five feet deep, but you don't want to just rule it out. It might be, it might get deeper. You look at all the way across, like two thirds of the way there, see the logs sticking out in the middle there on the other side also. You can see the trees sticking out right there. You can see them sticking out here. And you can actually see it's only about two feet deep right there. So that one, I'm taking off the list. There's just no depth to it. All right, let's see if my internet works and let's pull up our next location then all right so we just covered this one up here at the very north which is where the lake was dry we jumped over and we took care of this one here is where we actually put the boat in we are currently over here at this one which is too shallow we jumped up here to put eyes on but that's all gated and that was really busy because this is entire recreation area for the military which then is going to bring us back into civilian land. So we're gonna head over here to location number nine. And let's go put eyes on this one and put a boat in here. And that was gonna have a nice little, what, what I like about this one, we got some Blackhawks coming in. What I like about this one is it's a nice, quiet, secluded, out of the way, no houses over here that can see not many people are going to be using it with a boat ramp. So this one for today, very highly likely possible. So let's jump over there and let's go put a boat in. Uh, at least two that we have. If we have time, we'll squeeze in a third and a fourth. But right now with this one that is out of the way, it's my most hopeful location of the day. As well, the amount of scanning we have to do there at uh, boat ramps is where they're at. Now, some of them have some roads coming into them, so we might do just a little bit additional scanning, but total overall scanning is going to be about the same or less than what we did at that first lake today. Look at how low this lake is. So first of all, this one also has a gate coming into it. The park is closed, no fishing, no swimming, no boat launch. But look at the boat launch over there. Swim, beach, picnic, bathroom facilities closed, only boat ramp open. Okay, so the boat ramp is open. So let's go over to the boat ramp. But think about June, the lake levels are up. We're in the middle of winter, it's drawn down and if you look at where that boat is launching from, it will go over there. But look how low that water level is. And this lake, until we hit that north side today, we never put eyes on this lake. And this lake is a lot lower than the Stillhouse Lake, Stillhouse Hollow Lake that we were on yesterday. Take into account the gatehouse coming in. Take into account all of these picnic areas taking into account midsummer. So you take in those three factors, no longer hopeful on this being a location where we're gonna find James. Especially when you look at the amount of boats that are out here, even on a weekday in the middle of winter, this is gonna be a 
heavily, heavily used boat ramp here. So if you look at where the dark rocks are at and where the water level is normally going to be, it's going to be halfway up the ramp. We are at eight feet already. Okay. We have a chance here. 11 feet, 12 feet. I was wrong. Always double check it. All right, I was wrong. Look, eight feet, deep enough to hide a car. Easy scan though, not like that other lake that had all the foliage and the growth. This is a nice smooth bottom, easy to scan. We don't have to go over it over and over and over it like we did last time. Back up to five feet, four feet, too shallow there. And we'll do one more pass straight out from the boat ramp. Got a tire only. So when you look at the tire right there. So if you can see a tire, you're definitely gonna be able to see a car. All right, well that's it, that clears this boat ramp. We actually missed number nine. We gotta go back up the road. We actually ended up up at uh, number 10 is where we're at. So this is the campground that we came in past. And out here, this is not the secluded one that I was most hopeful on. So we're gonna go back up here to that one, number nine. So on my phone here, we're here, but we want to be right here. Head south toward Park Road, Westcliff Road. Three and a half miles away. All right, so this one is 100% locked up. So there is no access down to that one. I don't know how long that's been closed. If it's been closed for a year and a half, five years, at the start of COVID in 2020, I have absolutely no idea. It just says area closed until further notice. A lot of weeds growing up. In fact, there were some people hanging out back there. Let's ask them how long this has been closed. How long has that park been closed? Five years, okay. Awesome, sounds good, thank you. Five years. So that one, mark that one off. Let's turn around and come up with a game plan for one or two more spots since we have a little bit of time here. Location number nine, completely secluded, closed for five years, was my most highly probable, hopeful location of the day, is now off my list. Now, if we come back out here, we have covered everything possible that we have access to within the five mile radius, the 10 mile radius. Like we never go outside and really push it to the 15 mile radius because we're just not finding people for what's most efficient with our time. Right now we have an extra hour or so. I do have location number 11, 12, 13, and 14 over here. So we may be able to hit 
you know, one or two of these locations. Like, I want to be very efficient and just say, you know what, while I was in the area, I did everything I could for James and for his family. And so on that note, let's head over here to location number 11 right now and at least put the boat in there and see what, what we can do to identify if James happens to be in the water over here. All right. We have no access off of the dam here. Even if a car was to flip and go over the guardrail, there's just no way you're getting all the way into the lake. You have trees growing right out there in the middle of the lake. However, on this side, it may drop off enough that you can put a vehicle in here. But, uh, just again, coming back to, you're dealing with June 10th, midsummer. You're not dealing with a private, out of the way place to hide a vehicle if that's what happened. Turn right on Temple Slate Park Road. Hmm, I don't like it. I don't like any of this. I don't like the distance that we're away from Colleen now. I don't like the location of where we're at in a high-end, multi-million dollar neighborhood with congestion in the middle of June. We're here. I'm going to put the boat in still. I don't feel good about putting the boat in here, but I don't want to waste my day. Like I have extra time in my day right now to do at least this location, maybe one more. So that's what we're doing. Arriving at Temple's Lake Park Road. One foot, six feet, plenty deep right here. 10 feet. Eleven, twelve feet, all right. That's some nice depth there. Got a tire down there. Not a car, but we do have a tire. Another tire. In fact, you can see the tire right at the end of the boat ramp is what we have here. And I'll zoom in on that. So, there's the tire and the boat ramp. All right, well, one pass straight on in and that's gonna clear this area. That's it. Clear. One more location. Now, I was going to make a left and go on Temple Lake Park Road, but it said that it was a dead end. I don't know if I necessarily believe them or not. Oh, it is a dead end because it goes to one more um, boat ramp over there. That's the other boat ramp. Okay, so let's go back down that road. Oh, it actually has two boat ramps over there. That one says U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, so that one might be private, but maybe not. Oh, and then there's, there's where the other one's at, too. So let's do this. Let's go to the one at the very, very end because then I can go hit that sportsman's warehouse or the sportsman's club one that's, that's kind of private, and then I can check out this point also as it comes back to this other boat ramp all within a nice little area here all right that's the game plan
are not getting in there. Do not enter. And it looks like it's probably because the water level is down so low if you look down there. So you look at the map here. That road that we're at right now comes in into the entire park. The entire park is closed down, so we cannot get to this other boat ramp. We can't get to this boat ramp. Is that a problem? No. You want to go down? They got a camera. No, no problem. <laughs> no, we were working on a missing persons case from a year and a half ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, his name is Jace, or, um, James, James Ad Addison out of Killeen. So I was going to hit this boat ramp, the other one, and then jet over to the Sportsman's Club boat ramp. There's nobody down here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have the power. You have the power? Yeah, if you don't mind, if we can just clear the boat ramps real quick, we'll be with an, an hour in and out. Appreciate it. Thank you. In and out, in and out. Yeah. She came in kind of hot at first, but then she was really nice about it. Yeah, look how shallow it is here. So running from that boat ramp to that boat ramp is not going to be the best use of our time. So we'll put the boat in here, check this ramp, go over to the other ramp, and then go check out the last ramp is what we'll end up doing. Continue straight onto Far to Market Road 2305. Again though, midsummer. The park closes at 8.30 p.m. at sunset. You're just not going to come in here at the end of the day and gain access, especially with the gate. So really the only other real access that I'm going to say is we have a chance is putting in up here at this boat ramp here. And then right across the way, right around the corner, you have this sportsman's club, and I don't know if he was a member there or not, but if he was, then that's going to be quiet and secluded. So we'll just go hit that right around the corner real quick. So those will be our last two locations. Where's the ramp at? Oh, that's the ramp. The ramp is closed. All right, well, that shoots all of this. I'll talk to him out there. Oh, looks like the ramp's closed. They are. <laughs> no, if, uh, no worries. Well, I appreciate you uh, letting us in. Yeah. Okay. We've got one more boat ramp down at the other end. Now. Yeah, yeah, that one's just too far down. And at the end of the day, you know, it's not as likely that he's going to be at this park because it was, you know, June 10th, midsummer. You know, the park closes at 8, 8.30. You got the gates here, congestion, and I just don't feel like he would be anywhere that's this congested. Yeah. So. so no. yeah, but, I think it's pretty congested down here in the summertime. Yeah. Well, sounds good. Well, I appreciate it. Right down, down the hill here. Okay. Sir, TJ, I'm glad to meet you. TJ, thank you for your time. Yeah, I wish this one would have worked out for us, but. All right, well, sounds good. Thank, thanks for your time. Now, this is where we turn to you, our viewers. If you are anywhere in the clean area and you happen to have access to some of these military bases and some of these private ponds that they have that are kind of sort of open to the public and you happen to have a fish finder, do jump onto those bodies of water and see if by chance there is a vehicle underwater there. For those of you who are fishermen with sonar on your boat, anywhere in the Texas area, we don't know where James is at, turn your sonar on much closer to the boat ramp. Scan these areas and see if there are any vehicles underwater. Let's see what we can do to help James and his family out, to help bring him home and to give the family answers. Now, if you are not already subscribed, please do so, both on Facebook as well as YouTube. It is free to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so that way you get a notice anytime we upload another video. If you did not see episode number one, the links will be down below. We also have a membership that helps pay our expenses as we travel across the U.S. working these cold cases free of charge to family and law enforcement. Starts at $5 a month, goes up to $100. 
our way of saying thank you is we do release videos early to you, our members. But we do release all videos to the general public within a week or two. So we wanna again thank each and every one of you for being here, participating in this movement with us as we travel the US and do our best to help these families find their loved ones. We'll see you on the next one.